Hey all, Rich here. So I recently found nine more iOS 16 features that I think are gonna help lessen some of the inconveniences that come with technology. But before jumping into them, drop a comment down below telling me what you think of the new studio setup. Do you like the lighting? I'm really happy with how it turned out and I love being in this like kinda castly dungeon vibe. Gives me a lot of nostalgia to back in the day when I played with Legos all the time. Also, we're working to get to 1,000 subscribers, so consider helping us out by subbing to the channel and then sharing the video with your friends. All right, let's bounce. So for the first feature, have you ever found yourself being in a FaceTime call and then you, maybe you get home from your walk or whatever, you want to sit down and then like pull out your iPad, but you're still in that FaceTime call? Well, with iOS 16, you'll be able to hand off the call. Very similar to the handoff feature where if you have an app open, um, you'll see on the dock on Mac OS or in the dock on iPad OS, or even in the multitasking switcher that it's suggesting you to open up that app that you have open on another one of your devices. So you'll just be able to very easily switch the FaceTime call to the other device that you want to continue the call on. I know I'm gonna use that a lot because there are many situations where I start a FaceTime call on my Mac and then I want to actually get up and leave the in my office space, but I'm not able to do so without hanging up and then calling the other person back. All right, for this second one, um, if you didn't know, in the control center of iOS, you have the music recognition uh, like little square. It's, it's just Shazam. I don't know why they call it music recognition. But you can tap and hold that and then you'll see your history. Now, weirdly, it didn't sync the history of the Shazam and control center to the Shazam app. So you could find yourself using the control center Shazam you get to find out what the song's name is, but maybe you didn't save the notification or tap on it. Well, if you didn't know about the history being separate, you would later go into your Shazam app and that song that you Shazammed would not be there. So now in iOS 16, it actually syncs, which is just, it should have been there from the beginning. So super happy that that is there now. So you can Shazam from wherever you want and you'll be able to find the song that you Shazammed in any of the places where you have the Shazam history. All right, a big one for those of you who use Siri, you get a little bit more offline capabilities. So for one, you'll be able to control the home through Siri when you're not connected or maybe the Wi-Fi is down or whatever. You'll also be able to use intercom, which is one of the home features. And finally, you'll be able to do something with voicemail. I assume maybe ask Siri to play a recent voicemail or a voicemail that you may have gotten. All right. For this next one, this is probably even bigger than number three was, and maybe I should have popped it up there, but in mail, there's now a smart recognition for what you are uh, typing. Now, this does require one of the A12 Bionic chips, so it's all done on device, so there's no server telling, you know, reading what you're typing to give you this notification. It's all done on device. So if you say something, you know, like, hey, I've attached so-and-so, so, check this out and then get back to me. And then if you want to send that email, but you've never attached anything, even though you said you would, well, now you'll get a little alert. Like, hey, did you mean to send this already? Or do you still need to attach, you know, whatever it is that you need to attach? So that's just cool. One of those situations where your device is doing the, you know, the little processing, the little thinking that we more and more are not doing anymore. You know, to just, just kind of help us make sure our life is supposed is going the way it's supposed to be going so I really like that um, I use reminders all the time and this is pretty much like a smart reminder through AI next popping into Safari for number five here in Safari when you open up an image you can use the live text recognition to quickly copy and paste or perform a quick action like converting a currency or whatever additionally if you're watching a video once you pause the video you're again able to use live text to maybe copy something out of a sign you saw or you know whatever it is that you are wanting to capture super cool and handy and finally also with Safari when you're asked to make a strong password you can actually edit how the strong password needs to be made so there is an API for developers to use <laughs> which will then tell the strong password generator um, the correct type of password to make with the correct um, and allowed special characters and whatnot but you know it's 
There's just so much out there with code. I totally get it when there are developers who don't know about these features, although it is a little bit inconvenient. That being said, now you're able to edit by yourself the type of strong password that you need to create. Again, it's just another one of those ways where technology is helping to ease the small inconveniences of, well, technology. Now, for number six, and this might be my favorite. I should have put this, that's why it's on one of these multiples of three. So you're never ever going to lose tracking numbers now when you're buying stuff online if you use Apple Pay because it'll actually aggregate those tracking numbers that you get with your order and then put them into the wallet app. This is, in my opinion, gigantic because just think about it. When you go to the grocery store, right, you leave with your items. You really can't lose them unless you forget them on, you know, the little shopping bag uh, rack that if you're at like Target or whatever, you know, it spins around. If you forget to grab your bag, that's really the only situation where you leave a store and you don't have the things you purchased. But online, every single thing you purchase, you obviously don't have. So if you do a lot of online shopping like I do, maybe you use, you know, uh, this website here, website B there, website C there, and you do that on you know a weekly basis, maybe daily basis. It, it sometimes you know kind of is hard to keep track of where all those different tracking numbers and orders are. Besides going back to that website, or if you have an account with a website, and then checking your orders there. Now, just like if you were to put a physical receipt into your physical wallet your own wallet will keep these orders there with the tracking numbers. I, I think it makes total perfect sense and is a very good, how to say, like translation of a real world scenario to what it would be like in a digital world. Pretty cool and I'm very excited to use that. All right, for number seven, small one, but everyone gets a fitness app. This makes a lot of sense because like your iPhone can track your steps for you. So why not give people who bought an iPhone the fitness app, right? Why are we locking down? Like if you're an Apple customer, you should get the full Apple, uh, you know, the, the full Apple experience. Obviously it's not gonna get your stand goal. I feel like they could have given you, you know, stand hours, um, but you know, whatever is cool nonetheless. Nice that they are now able to have the rings and we can compete with our friends who maybe don't care for the Apple Watch. All right, on number eight, the Reminders app gets templates. Now I'm specifically going to use this for like packing lists. I always find myself recreating the same list every single summer or winter when I go on a trip. So this actually makes a lot of sense. If you were smart, maybe you already had a list in notes that maybe you would copy and paste over or even just use the notes checklist. But I prefer reminders for, you know, checklist type of lists that I need. Um, so this is really cool for those types of lists you just do over and over again. And finally, number nine, another one of my favorites, focus modes now lets you easily link an Apple Watch watch face and the home screen to the particular focus mode that you're in. Also new, now that you can create lock screens, those are also obviously tied into that. This is big because I had like 20 different, okay, 20 is a lot, but I had definitely 10 different automations in the shortcuts app, which would change my Apple Watch watch face for me. Um, so I'm glad Apple recognized that this is something people are doing and just made it, you know, all part of the focus mode UI. Um, I'm hoping more and more people use focus modes because that means Apple will improve focus modes more and more. So yeah, I'm very looking forward to those improvements in iOS 16. All right, and that's my list of these nine inconvenience destroying improvements coming in iOS 16. Drop a comment down below for what your favorite one is. And again, trying to get to 1000 subscribers. So if you enjoyed the video, consider subbing to the channel, hitting that like and sharing the video with your friends. All right, and see you in the next one. Rich Aesthetic out, peace.